Hi all, Steve here. Welcome to this short session on Anthology Ally. Here's our objectives, just three simple ones. If you've got access to a device right now, there are some points in the video where you can join in. We're looking for you to be able to articulate the importance of accessibility in online courses and then plan some improvements to your own courses using the functionality of Ally and also recognize the alternative formats functionality which we'll come on to later. What are some what are some of the things you might think of when you hear the word accessibility? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think. You can pause the video. Here's a few possibilities. Physical accessibility, such as accommodation for people with disabilities, ramps instead of stairs. Digital accessibility, like adding descriptions to images and subtitles to video. And legal compliance, it's something we have to do by law. So accessibility does assist those with disabilities. It gives equal access to places online and in the physical world. But another thing, another important thing it does is it makes courses more inclusive in general, more welcome and easier to use for everyone, not just those with disabilities. And of course, making the course accessible is a legal requirement. There's the 2010 Act and the 2018 Public Sector Body Website Act that you can look up if you're interested. Um, to simplify it though, if your course is properly structured and you've got titles, headings, a table of contents in your documents, alternative text for images, meaningful names for things, a transcript if you've got an audio file, it's going to be so much easier for everyone to use, not just those with disabilities. So we're going to have a look at Ally. Ally is an accessibility report and an improvement plugin for Moodle which if you don't know is what our LearnNet virtual learning environment runs on. There are tools for students. Uh, we'll see this in action in a little bit. Students can choose to access resources as spoken word, ebooks, braille and more. Uh, lecturers have access to the same alternative formats plus the ability to improve the accessibility of the course through reports and tools. And at an institutional level, uh, for managers, it's more of the same, plus some institutional reports to get an overall score for the institution. This is a clear way to show progress to improving our overall accessibility score. So this is a quick look at each of the roles. Students can download some resources in alternative formats. You can see a list of the formats here. Lecturers get traffic light indicators next to some course resources and an accessibility report which guides them to help fix any content with problems. And at the institution level we have an overall score for all courses uh, by session and this allows us to show trends. We can see the overall score seems to be going up each year which is a good sign. We're at about 80% at the moment which isn't bad at all. Some individual items will be severely impacted and we can actually identify the most obvious issues uh, across the whole institution from this management interface. We would like you as lecturers to take responsibility for your own materials. If there's obvious issues in your course, Ally will guide you through the process of fixing them. To get your accessibility report, you go to the reports tab in your course and then accessibility report. If you've got a device with you, you can do this as we go along and check out your own scores. Feel free to pause the video if you want to check your own scores at any time. What will happen is that this is the front page of the accessibility report you'll get. The first tab is an overview which shows a summary of how your course is doing along with a couple of quick fix options. In this case, the overall score isn't bad, but as you can see, there's some low score in content within the course. For a more detailed look at the resources in your course, switch to the content tab. And this will list every item in your course, both documents and things like Moodle books and Moodle pages, ordered by score or the number of issues that they have. 
You can click on an item to see details of the issues and fixes available. Like this Word document that's showing 52%. Um, there's step-by-step -step instructions to help you repair your resources, which I'm not going to go into uh, because they're, they depend on the resource and the problem. We'll have a quick look at fixing something later. Looking at the Word document in this case, we're being asked to upload a version with image descriptions. The, ne the neat thing about this is Ally will actually replace the original file in Moodle once you've repaired it, so you don't have to go looking for it. You can download the file right here um, with the download button and then drag or upload your repaired file uh, right into this page and Ally will do the rest. At the end, I'll provide a link to Ally's own instructor training guide, which covers all this in more detail. And the information on this page was lifted straight from Anthology's website. If you've got a very low scoring course, you may want to concentrate on the very worst items first and try your best to get them up to scratch. If you're already scoring quite high, you may get a few hints from the content report and fix up the last few issues. There's no requirement to get a perfect score. You could spend forever tweaking things to increase your score and not get there. The most important thing is to improve on low scoring items. And just as a side note, students will not see these gauges in the course. They only see the alternative formats icon. So you don't need to worry about that. Moving on to the alternative formats offered by Ally, here's a question. How do you like to access online materials? Do you like to read things on your phone or tablet? Do you use a screen reader? Do you like videos? Would you prefer to read text or do you like to listen to audio? I personally favour a text file because I can skim through it, um, copy quotes from it quite easily. I find that if I listen to things like podcasts, I forget what someone said and I have to keep going back and listening again. And for some resources, Ally provides a variety of alternative formats on demand. I'm not going through all of them, but some of the highlights have got to be audio. So if you've got a Word document, you can get a downloadable audio version of the document to listen to later. Braille, which is not widely used in our institution but it's amazing this system can convert a word document into an electronic braille file that works through a tactile reader an ocr pdf solves a common problem which we'll have a quick look at now so as you can see in the slide here there's a scanned pdf file showing up in this course this is the way it's shown in a LearNet course and as we saw earlier, Ally will tell you how well constructed your file is. Not very well in this case, and it, it's going to tell you how to fix them. We should aim to improve low scoring items like this as soon as practical. I mean, no one's judging because you might have made the document in a hurry or inherited the course, or the document might have come from an outside agency and there's not much you can do. The PDF here is just a photograph of some text. It's not actually any use to anyone who can't clearly read the text in the image. I'm just wondering if anyone spotted the accessibility score for this PDF as a percentage when we're looking at the report. I'll put the answer up in three seconds. Zero uh, percent. But Ally can possibly help with this as long as the text isn't too blurry. In the alternative formats menu, you can select OCR PDF. If it's not available, you might have to find other means of fixing the file, like locating the original source. Once you click OCR PDF, after a couple of minutes in your downloads folder, you'll have an improved version of the file with selectable text. And you can then upload this back into the course right from the Ally report page and it will replace it for you. If you improve and replace this file, no one else will need to go through that process. And another guessing game, if you can guess the accessibility score now it's been turned into the text, I'll give you three seconds. Well, it's now 
It's not 100% yet, and the reason for that is that there's no headings or structure to the document, so there's still room for improvement. Here we are in our test course, where you can see the scanned PDF original file with its low score, and then the OCR replacement with its slightly higher score. And here's a Word document that's showing the gauge says it's medium accessibility, so there's things that can be improved. We click on the gauge, Ally opens this page and it, it's highlighting in red here that this image doesn't have a description. So what we need to do is download the Word document and that will pop into the downloads folder and then we'll just open up Word. We'll enable editing. Now another thing that's wrong with this file is it doesn't actually have any structure so let's give it a heading. Uh, give it a title and then this introduction can be a head in one and this conclusion can be a head in one and then we've given the document some structure if you don't know when you right click on an image in Word there's a view alt text option and then you can say this is a PDF icon and then we want to save the file as word fixed and then if we go back to the course what we can do is browse go to our downloads find the fixed file ally will replace this file in moodle and it's now given us a perfect score and it's as simple as that to fix a file Another way to approach the accessibility of your online course is to consider whether certain content should be documents or files in the first place. Like we've spent time looking repairing the accessibility of files. There is a more future-proof solution which is easier to keep up to date even if it means a little extra effort up front. If you type an activity into a Word document then upload this into your course. You've immediately added barriers for anyone who needs to access it. They need to download and open the file. They need to have Word or something capable of opening a Word document. Some mobiles might open the Word document, but we don't know for sure how it's going to look. And they may need to do more work, such as finding quiz answers from yourself or submitting a file for later feedback. Activity 1 here is asking students to create a short reflection about participating in an online course. Activity 2 is asking them to make a choice. And Activity 3 is a quiz. There are instances when a document is the right thing, as I'll cover later, such as templates that students need to fill in for an assignment and the like. But in the case of the activities shown here, this isn't the case. We can use Moodle's own built-in resource types, labels, page, book, forum, choice, quiz. This will be compatible with more devices because it's just a web page. There's no need to download anything and the accessibility score should be higher without you making any effort. The amount of mobile data the user will use will be much less and you can use activity completion to track whether students have attempted the activity. I've got a separate video on that which I'll link in the description. All six of these resources by the way have a perfect accessibility score in the report and which is preferred depends on your circumstances and skill level. As a counter argument to the last slide sometimes users prefer Word documents. In fact I create Word versions of any online courses I'm working on why do you think that is? The thing is Word documents can be downloaded when the user has access to a connection and accessed offline. So this is a benefit for staff and students who might have limited or intermittent internet access. They may also not be confident with offline web pages. Our VLE requires an active internet connection to be useful. Users can also print out sections or the entire document which can be vital for those people that prefer hard copies or want to make physical notes. 
It's much more difficult to print web pages, which you'll know if you've ever tried. Word documents primarily consist of text, which can be easier for some individuals to comprehend and engage with. And if you're going to provide a Word document, you can now check and repair its accessibility right there in your course. You should now recognise the importance of accessibility in an online course. It assists those with disabilities, helps us with legal compliance and generally makes courses better for everyone. Hopefully you have a plan to improve your own scores and you should also be able to recognise the additional formats capability in Ally. I'd encourage everyone to view this short video taken from our training session with Ruben from Anthology. He covers all of the alternative formats in far more detail than I can in the allocated time. If you can't capture this QR code, there'll be a link in the video description. Here's another link to the Anthology help files for Ally. This is a PDF file, so it should load straight onto your iPad, phone or computer. Again, if you can't scan the code, there'll be a link down in the description. And here are some of the references, which will also be included in the video description. Now, thanks for listening, and as always, you can contact the learning and teaching team if you need any further assistance.